Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Mr. Thrive and Survive is at it again. He just refuses to believe that eclipses can work the way they actually do. Really? And he's particularly upset about the eclipse produced by Io on the surface of Jupiter. So let's see if we can straighten this out for him. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. And Gladys, let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Hey everybody, Christmas will thrive and survive. This video is going to look at the science, and we're going to do science, actual uh, real observations here. Uh, to see if what NASA and mainstream scientists has been trying to sell us and which has been universally accepted without question is the umbra penumbra. Pay attention at this part of the video. Mr. Thrive and Survive has correctly identified the area of the umbra and the penumbra. Now that's going to change in a few minutes. I've speeded up this part of the video. Uh, what Thrive and Survive is doing is constructing a 70 mile diameter dot to simulate the umbra of a solar eclipse that occurred here in the U.S. a couple of years ago, one that actually passed right over my location. Ultimately, he's going to use that to try to compare with the umbra produced by an eclipse caused by Io on the surface of Jupiter. There's a dramatic difference in the size of the umbra produced by the moon here on Earth and Io on Jupiter, and there's a very good reason for that that we're going to be taking a look at here in just a minute. All right, now I'm going to be able to show you the whole disk here. Here it is again. Um, it's actually a little bit bigger than halfway across, so again, I'm going with the other side a little bit here. Uh, we're going to select this, and we're going to copy it and move it. To around the middle of the country where it went through. So if we had a satellite picture like we had with Jupiter, what would that look like? There we go. Look at that. Little teeny little dot. Little teeny Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. Look at that. Now, let's compare that to Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a little bit difference, huh? And, uh, you know, if we have to, uh, uh, well, let's do this. Let's, let's look at the difference here. Now, you're going to say, oh, you're not showing all the Jupiter. Well, go look at my other video. And uh, go to uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory site that I left the link to where you can see the entire disk. But uh, let's compare Jupiter's size to the Earth. Here we go. Look at all these Earths that can fit into the side of Jupiter. All right. So, how big would the spec be? All right. <laughs> there is no comparison. Only cognitive dissonance would allow you to destroy your own thinking here and say, oh, they're pretty much comparable, Rich. There's a little bit different angles and the umbra penumbra. Oh, yeah, umbra penumbra. Let's get into that because this is the heart of the meat of the matter right here. Okay, back to the video that was sent to me. Now, granted, this is going to sound a little weird pulling in the Kennedy assassination here, but... Um, so you think pulling in the Kennedy assassination in the middle of a presentation about eclipses is a little weird? Just out of curiosity, Rich, what do you think really weird would be? Somebody probably listening to this video, watching this video, has seen the assassination of Kennedy, where he was shot and his head went back and to the left, and the front right part of his head was blown off. And yet, because the government said that it was a lone assassin in the back, this guy right here, Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, just because the government said that, most of the people believed it, and the CIA came up with the term conspiracy theory to uh, degrade anyone who actually wanted to use their logic. You see, logic tells you that if your head goes back and to the left, that means you were shot in the front right. So there are some people that actually use their logic and were able to tell before the 2018 release of the CIA files that show that 
Yes, indeed, there was an assassin in the front. And you can look that up. That was released by uh, Trump, I believe, about a year ago. So, or two years ago. And there's still more to be released there also. What can our logic tell us about the Umbra Penumbra? Are we making an assumption that just, just like the Kennedy assassination, that what the government tells us, and NASA is most definitely an offshoot of the government, just because what NASA tells us it's true, even though do our census tell us this? Do we just accept everything blindly, like 90% at least of the people did with Kennedy's assassination? Well, let's take a look at it real quick. All right, now I have to use a disclaimer. Do not use a local light that's inside the house or inside your garage or something like that. If I did that, I would be absolutely hammered without end. We don't need to use an artificial light. All we have to do is use the real sun. Here's the argument. It's always, because the sun is larger, because the sun is larger than the object that is blocking the sun, we get this umbra penumbra effect. And particularly the effect we get with the lunar eclipse, or I'm sorry, the solar eclipses. And we have the shadow, as you can see here, it comes down to a point, and then it goes the other way. Totally ridiculous, but we're not going to get into that. I've gotten to that in other videos. Because what's ridiculous about it is, at 93 million miles, the rays are virtually parallel, and they do not spread out in space without an atmosphere. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You had this graphic up a minute ago. It shows the sun and the eclipsing body, the moon, the earth, Io, whatever is causing the eclipse. The eclipse occurs to the right of that body, over here where I've shaded it in blue, not between the sun and the eclipsing body. If you're within the area defined as the penumbra, you will see a partial eclipse. If you're in the area defined as the antumbra, you'll see an annular eclipse. And if you're within the umbra, you see a total eclipse. You've got this point confused with that point. And this graphic is completely wrong. Here is the sun. This is the moon. Or Io. Or the earth for that matter if we're talking about a lunar eclipse. And the blue sphere I've drawn in here is the Earth or Jupiter, for instance. This is not a focal point. Those lines simply show the extents of the rays of light as they come from the sun passing the eclipsing body. That's all that's meant to show. This is where the umbra is. This is where the total eclipse takes place. This is the penumbra. This is where you see a partial eclipse. Got it? So that's not the argument here, though. But all you have to have is a larger sun and a smaller moon or a smaller blocking object. That is the whole thing. If you look up light physics, so to speak, with the sun and with the eclipses, they will always say, oh, if it's a larger object like the sun, it's going to produce the umbra penumbra, just like we supposedly have with eclipses. Let's look at something local using the same sun that is used in eclipses. Now, this is simply a telephone pole that I shot earlier today. And in the next video, you're going to see how the shadow does. This was We seem to be confusing light stanchions with telephone poles. Maybe that's where the problem is. In length. And uh, this is the actual physics that we can actually prove ourselves in person. So let's take a look at it from a purely scientific and observational point of view. What do we have here? No matter what object we use on Earth, it's going to be smaller than the sun. So we've, we've got a larger sun blocking uh, any object that blocks it is going to be smaller, so we don't have to worry about uh, having an object that's larger than the sun. And let's just say we had a blocking object that was located here. 
So here we have an object. And what if we were somewhere in here? What kind of shadow size should we see according to this diagram? Well, we should have something like that, right? Sounds logical. Because the argument is the farther you're up in the cone, the larger the shadow that would be produced. That's why we're, supposedly we have a 10,000 mile and greater uh, shadow on Jupiter because it's a little bit farther up the cone. The problem Thrive and Survive has is not being able to comprehend the size of the solar system. Now what you see on the screen right now, this is AutoCAD. What looks like just a white line up here at the top is actually representing the sun way over here on the left and Jupiter way over here on the right. The much shorter magenta lines that you see here at the bottom again would be the sun and earth at about that position. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now you can start to see the sun. There's, there's the sun. And I picked the date of August the 21st of 2017. That was the last full solar eclipse uh, here in the U.S. that I'm aware of. It was a really good one for me because it occurred uh, right here where I live. And on that particular day, the distance to the sun was 94,022,000 miles. So I've drawn that to scale. And if we zoom in over here, the red circle is the orbit of the moon. Which during that time frame, uh, the moon's orbit was 231,826 miles in diameter, or at least that was the distance from the Earth to the moon. Now I need to clean up the view resolution. Pardon me just a moment while I do that. If we don't do that, we don't get very good clean looking circles. Let's zoom in a little bit. There's the moon represented at 231,000 826 miles from Earth. And again, I've drawn lines from the top and the bottom uh, edges of the sun tangent to the moon, and that those lines will define the umbra and penumbra. So let's go over to the Earth and see what happens. Well, the umbra would have had a diameter of 74.9 miles. If you check the data, you'll find out that's pretty close. The penumbra, the magenta lines, is really huge. But you, you know that. You know that you can see a partial eclipse for a, a, in a very, very large area of the Earth. That uh, diameter is 4,259 miles. This perfectly demonstrates how the very small umbra works with the geometry of our Earth and our Moon and our distance to the Sun. Now something completely different happens when we look at Jupiter. Again, here's the Sun. But now Jupiter is about five times as far away from the Sun as the Earth is. On the other hand, Jupiter's moon Io, you see here, which is slightly larger than our moon, is actually a little bit closer to Jupiter. But the geometry is such, by virtue of the fact that it is so much further away from the Sun, the lines really are very nearly parallel. Again, I've drawn two sets of lines. It's hard to see here. But when we move over to where they intersect the surface of Jupiter, there you go. For Jupiter, the umbra is 1,876 miles in diameter and the penumbra is 2,654 miles. So a much, much larger umbra for Jupiter. Now those views from the Juno spacecraft 
are really hard to duplicate. We don't know exactly how far the spacecraft was from the surface, etc., etc. I thought a better demonstration might be using Earth-based observations. Here's an observation that was made by Astronomy Now. And you can see uh, the moon Io and there's the shadow Io is casting and the moon Ganymede up here and Ganymede's shadow. I have drawn a little white circle here representing the umbra for Io's shadow. Let's superimpose that on top of what we see here and see how it matches. perfectly. Let me turn it back off. Turn it back on. A perfect match. So there's nothing inconsistent about this, uh, Mr. Thrive and Survive. This is exactly what we expect. So what if we were further down here, let's say in here, what size shadow should we have there? Yeah, something like that, right? So the closer we get to this focal point, the smaller the shadow would be. And then, of course, when we come out on the other side, uh, the further we get away from it, the larger the shadow should be also. Logical, right? Makes sense. So if we have an object that is blocking sunlight, it should have... Uh, the properties uh, of that should go down to almost nothing, and then we should see that shadow come back out larger again on the other side. Uh, the properties uh, of that should go down to almost nothing, and then we should see that shadow come back out larger again on the other side. Um, no. Just, just... No. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and uh, there's a link to the Patreon. You'll find that up in the description. I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey, Gladys, that's about as much stupid as I can put up with for one day. We're out of here. <laughs>